Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of two Iron Age Bactrians from southern Uzbekistan. Um, they're, they're both male, their names I give them is Ashot and Anish. Uh, you can see on the screen what samples Ashot and Anish respectively refer to. Uh, they both have R1AZ93 which is the uh, sort of the Indo-Iranian subclade of R1A and the two individuals are not close relatives. When it comes to phenotype, this is pretty much what uh, Ashot is predicted to look like based on his genome. Uh, Mayna Shakot tool is predicting him to have brown color eyes uh, and brown or dark brown but probably not hazel. You can see hazel is only 8% and definitely not green or blue or blue with amber center. So it's pretty much uh, most likely brown or dark brown for eye color. Uh, black hair and snub shaped nose. He's predicted to have curly hair with my hair ID tool here. The prediction is pretty solid. It was based on maybe 12 or 13. I don't really remember, but you can check by downloading the file and running it from my hair ID tool, uh, which is on my GitHub. Uh, around, I think, 12 or 13 SNPs were used in this prediction. Uh, and he's actually predicted to have sub-Saharan African eye shape, followed by Middle Eastern eye shape, which is kind of similar, uh, I guess, to Eurasian or Middle Eastern eye shapes. There's not really that big of a difference between sub-Saharan African eye shapes and, for example, my eye shape even. Um, but he's got partially BH2, blue eye haplotype 2, and BH1. He's homozygous for uh, this one variation of BH2, which kind of kind of interesting that he's homozygous for this variation, but not for the other one. Uh, and he doesn't have BH3, blue eye haplotype 3, or blue eye haplotype 4. Uh, and something that really contributed to him having darker pigmentation is his genotype in the ASIP and SLC45A2. Uh, kind of atypical genotype for Europeans, which leads to darker skin tones for Europeans, but he's not a European. Uh, however, we can pretty much assume that he had white skin based on his genotype, uh, based on his result with a snipper free. So I'm not sure whether my depiction of him looking, you know, this brown is accurate because according to snipper free, he's got white skin. And now here's Anish. Now you can see Anish is quite a lot uh, lighter. He's got two derived variants in all the SLC45A2 and ASIP variations that Mayna Shakot looks for. Uh, so he's got lighter color skin, typically European skin shade. Uh, he does not have any derived variants in MC1R that have to do with ginger hair and no East Asian EDAR. He's heterozygous for BH1 and BH2. And something that's different from the previous sample, he's actually heterozygous for BH3 as well. He's got blue eye hepatitis 3. This means he had an ancestor that had BH1 and BH2 and BH3 somewhere down his line, somewhere in his lineage, he had an ancestor with all three mutations. Uh, and this is pretty impressive because BH3 is a very Northern European kind of uh, blue eye mutation. So when it comes to Nashakot, Nashakot is predicting him to have brown or hazel color eyes. Uh, and there's even the possibility of him having blue eyes with an amber center at 21.2% or green. There isn't really a possibility of him having blue eyes. It's only 0.6%. And there also isn't really a possibility of him having brown, I mean, dark brown eyes. Uh, that's only 0.4%. However, there is a high likelihood of him having brown eyes. In fact, uh, brown is the biggest category that he scores for eye color. Uh, he's predicted to have also snub shaped nose and brown hair. Uh, with my Nashakot. Uh, when it comes to eye shape prediction, eye, uh, eye shape prediction for him is a very Estonian or kind of uh, West Eurasian. There isn't really li any likelihood of him having East Asian or Oceanian. You can see he's scoring 0% East Asian for the eye shape. Definitely not in East Asian or Oceanian or American Indian eye shape. Uh, and he's actually predicted to have kinky hair with my hair ID tool. Uh, this result for hair for the hair texture maybe not the best because it was only based on I think like six or five, I don't really remember. Once again, you can check by downloading the file, which is in the description, but it was based on like six or five variations. So it's maybe not the best predictor for, not the best prediction for uh, hair shape. However, it's likely that he had curly hair. Now here's what Anish and Ashot score with PanDNA LK10. You can see for both of them the largest component is CHG or Cocosus Hunter Gatherer. Now they don't actually have 44 or 43% Cocosus Hunter Gatherer admixture. It's just that this calculator lacks a reference for BMAC and uh, various other West Asian groups such as Iranian Neolithic farmers. So they just score 
CHG in place of BMAC or CHG in place of Iranian Neolithic farmers or perhaps CHG plus ASI in place of BMAC or CHG plus ASI in place of Iranian Neolithic farmers. Uh, however, they do have a lot of Caucasus affinities and they are actually closest to Chechens and Pashtuns and Lesgins. All of them are closest. The three closest populations to them are Chechens, Lesgins and Pashtuns. Lesgins are a group of Caucasians in the east in the south, in the, in the very south of Dagestan, Eastern Caucasus. Now here's their simulated G25 results. A shot seems to be most similar to uh, Yagnobis, which are they Tajik or are they Pamiri? I don't know. I think uh, Yagnobi might be East Iranic speaking. I think they might be Pamiris. Uh, and Anish is also most similar to Yagnobis, which I'm not sure if they're Tajiks. For some reason, uh, with G25, they just name everybody from Tajikistan as Tajik, even though there's like a bunch of different ethnicities living there. Uh, they are both pretty similar to various Eastern Caucasians, such as Tabasarans, Avars, Laks, and they're both actually quite similar to Iranians, although Anish seems to be more similar to Iranians than Ashot. And this is what they score with Eurogenes K13, and it seems to me that Anish is actually a little bit more Western and a little bit less like South Asian, I mean, not even a little bit, 3% less South Asian and quite a lot um, more West Mediterranean and uh, East Mediterranean and Red Sea. If you compare the Red Sea, Anish is 2% two uh, more or actually 2.5% more uh, Red Sea admixture than Ashot. And with the Oracle, Anish seems to be getting modeled as a mixture of Lesgin plus Tajik for num line number two. Um, basically half Lizgin plus half Tajik, whereas Ashot is getting models actually very crazy results. Uh, Lizgin plus Chamar or Lizgin plus various South Asian groups. So Ashot is very uh, much shifted towards South Asia. This is their MZLP K16 results and here you can see actually uh, it's very apparent why Anish is a lot closer to Iranians than Ashot is. Uh, you know why that is? It's because Anish is scoring 4.5% Near East when Ashot is scoring 1.7% Near East. It's a big difference. Anish is also scoring more Neolithic, 1% uh, more Neolithic than Ashot. And Anish is also scoring uh, a little bit less, a lot less step, 3% less step than Ashot. And he's scoring a lot less Northeast European, actually 3% Northeast European once again, 3% less Northeast European than Ashot. So Anish is just all around more Middle Eastern and more similar to, you know, Iranians as you've seen with G25. Uh, this is kind of really interesting how you can see this with the GD match um, results as well. This kind of shift towards Iran and the Middle East in general, whereas Ashot has a little bit of a shift towards, it seems to be... North, Northern Europe and Steppe and South Asia. Now we're going to take a look at the results with my Genome Analyzer tool, which I developed specifically for my YouTube content to make it easier, but you can use it from my website as well. Let's look at Ashot first. Okay, so Ashot got a gene called Valmet variation, which means Valmet genotype, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake, and intermediate dopamine levels. So the G here is the worry, um, worry or allele, and the A here is the worry -er allele. So he's got one worry -er and one worry or allele. GG in this variation of COMT, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. GG here in MAOA leading to higher MAOA enzyme activity. Higher MAOA enzyme activity meaning less dopamine, quicker dopamine reuptake, and therefore less dopamine. So this is also, uh, this is a warrior genotype. Uh, it's kind of different, it's different from COMT. Completely different gene and completely different enzyme, but they do the same thing. Both COMT and MAOA break down dopamine. Uh, AA or two derived no go learner variants in DRD2 profilinates in progression. Very interesting genotype here because this is a super stereotypically European genotype to have. And this comes together with a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia and an increased likelihood of no go learning, which is the ability to withhold a response when it's not warranted. He's got GG in this variation of DRD2, meaning less dopamine D2 receptors and decreased risk of schizophrenia. Well, these two, they kind of come together. Uh, these two come together. He's got AA genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated in an increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain 
and an increased likelihood of schizophrenia as well as addiction as well as many other uh, negative things. He's got GG in this variation of TAC1, which is the typical genotype for most humans leading to slightly higher number of dopamine receptor sites and a lower risk of ADHD and al alcoholism. Now this is TAC1 and his genotype here is GG, which is A2A2. Now, uh, if you've been following my channel and you've seen my gorilla and orangutan and chimpanzee results and various Neanderthal results, they all have A1, A1 or AA here which leads to less dopamine D2 receptor sites and basically the reverse the reverse of this result. And this is very like atypical for modern humans. So most humans have GG here, like this individual. He's got CC genotype here, DRD2. Typical genotype for most humans leading to slightly higher number of D2 dopamine receptor sites and better memory performance, okay. CC here, DRD1, typical human genotype and leads to slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. CC here, DRD1, a rare genotype that's implicated in lower odds of autism and tobacco addiction. So from what I'm seeing now, it's very improbable that this individual had any kind of mental health issues. TT here in DRD2, which is implicated in higher risk of OCD intellectual and intellectual disability, but not that, not that big of a deal. AA here in DRD3, which is mostly a Eurasian genotype, and it increases the risk of autism and autistic personality traits. TT here, which is the typical genotype for most humans. The implications of this genotype is that the individual does not have long form, form 5 HTT LPR and does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. So most people have short form 5 HTT LPR just like this individual. But some people, like me for example, have um, long form 5 HTT LPR. And that means we have a decreased risk for depression, which is pretty cool. Um, he's got GG in this variation of MCM6, which means the individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. No European lactose persistence and higher levels of empathy here, higher levels of empathy, very empathetic result. It seems that this individual did not struggle with empathy. For diabetes, he's got GG here, which leads to lower risk of various autoimmune disorders in type 1 diabetes, sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Here we got uh, two variants for higher odds of type 2 diabetes. So sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes probably does not have type 1 diabetes. Now no APOE here, no Alzheimer's. TT here which is to slightly decrease the risk of Alzheimer's. So yeah, definitely it doesn't have Alzheimer's. And for myopia, AA in this variation, which is the typical genotype and leads to slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness. All right, seems very typical. Now let's go to let's go to Anish. Anish, unlike a shot, is a warrior. Anish got val uh, val val genotype, which means higher activity of the COMT enzyme and quicker breakdown of dopamine. Right. Uh, this variation of COMT, typical human genotype for most humans, and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, GG here. So yeah, Anish does not have any of the no-go learner variants in DRD2. Uh, he's got sort of the typical non-European genotype in DRD2, uh, which means higher number of D2 receptor sites in the brain and the higher likelihood of schizophrenia. AA here, which means increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites and higher risk of schizophrenia. Well, these two come together, as I've said previously, these two variations come together. They're in a linked region together. Uh, they're what you might call a haplotype. You know how they ha have BEH2, BEH3, blue eye haplotype. Well, these are also haplotypes. There's Newsflash, there's a haplotype for every every gene. In every gene, for every gene you can build a phylogenetic tree, and uh, for every gene you can determine a certain set of haplotypes. All right, so he's got GG genotype in this variation of DRT2, which is the typical genotype for most humans, and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. Uh, GG here. Well, once again, A2A2 in TAC1, which is the typical genotype for most humans. I don't need to describe this again. Uh, CC genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to higher uh, number of D2 dopamine receptor sites and better memory performance. I think this was, I think this was the same as the previous individual. CC here in DRD1, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of various mental health conditions. TT here in DRD1, which is a typical genotype associated with slightly higher odds of autism and tobacco addiction. Uh, TT here in DRD3, which is the typical genotype associated with slightly lower risk of OCD and intellectual disability. So this one is different from uh, from our 
Um, Ashtad or what was the name? Dude, what was the name? I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, yikes. Let me check. Uh, Ashot. <laughs> wow. All right. I don't even have the lack of mem lack of memory mutation and wow that's crazy. All right, so our I forgot who I was doing. I was doing oh my god, Anish. All right, Anish. All right, so Anish um got AA in this variation of DRD3, which is mostly a Eurasian genotype, and it increases the risk of autism and autistic personality traits. AA here in DRD4, which is implicated in a higher likelihood of schizophrenia. That's pretty rare. I haven't seen that yet. And TT here in DRD4, which is a typical genotype associated with lower odds of, in of intellectual disability and ADHD. Lactose persistence does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, here, this is the sociopath, the sociopath gene in this variation of OXTR. And this is kind of the intermediate or heterozygous genotype in this variation of OXTR. This is the main OXTR variation that I typically look for. And he's heterozygous here, so he's got one sociopath variant and one empathic variant. For diabetes, uh, lower risk of various autoimmune disorders and type 1 diabetes. Once again, sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. So, uh, once again, low risk of type 1 diabetes. For hemochromatosis, he does not have, uh, does not have um, C. 282Y hemochromatosis mutation and HFE's CIS282TIR variation, uh, which is one of the main variations. You see these two variations are kind of the main, the main line variations for hemochromatosis. This one doesn't really matter all that much and it's much rarer. Uh, most cases of hemochromatosis can be predicted by just these two genotypes here. For Alzheimer's, I think it's like 80%. I think it's 80% of variation in hemochromatosis phenotype can be predicted with just these two genotypes. The, just these two variations. For Alzheimer's, does not have uh, APOE2. And for myopia, once again, here is AA, which means higher risk of myopia or nearsightedness. And here is AA, which leads to a decrease in the risk of myopia. Wow, this was very tough to get through. <laughs> I messed up the name. Uh, thanks for watching until the end. You can download both of these files in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Check out my check check out my uh, app, my little website. Uh, you can find this genome analyzer tool on my app on my website. I coded it myself. Um, well, thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.